One of the most powerful parts of writing web applications in the modern era is how we can quickly create an application that does a lot with just a little bit of our own code. We can do this using open source packages. Have you ever wanted to contribute a package to the community for others to use? Maybe you wanted to modify an existing package for your personal use. If you have, you're in luck, because in this video, we'll be discussing how you can create a package and list it on the package's website so anyone can use it in their projects. Hello, developers, and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published, and make sure you follow me at Scott Keck Warren on phpc.social and Twitter. To demonstrate how to create our own package, we're going to create a value object package. If this is your first time hearing about value objects, make sure you check out our video about value objects located in the feed. I've also put a link in the description. To create our package, we need to first pick a package name. I know, I know, naming things is hard, but this is important because we cannot change our package name once we've picked it, so it's important to get it right. Package names can contain any alphanumeric characters plus underscores, periods, and hyphens. It consists of a vendor name and a project name and must be globally unique. For some projects with a unique name like PHP unit, the vendor name and the project are the same. Once the name has been determined, we need to create a working directory, if we haven't already, and CD into it. Then we're going to install Composer into our newly created directory, unless we have it installed globally. We talked about how to install Composer in our video on Composer, and we prefer to have a copy of Composer in each project as we're working on it. So in this video, we'll expect that to be the case. Because this is a shared library that others will use, we won't be committing it to source control. Next, we're going to initialize our package. This is done by running php composer.par init. Composer will then walk us through a series of questions that will help it build a composer.json file for us. Accept the defaults when possible and provide a helpful description for the package. My composer.json looks like the following. At this point, we have a basic setup for our package of value objects. Now we just need to create the classes that we're going to use. We're going to start with the following in the source name first name.php file. This creates a very basic library, but we need to get it out onto the internet so others can use it. To do this, we first need to push our source code to a supported public repository. As of this recording, we can use GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, or Gidea. We're going to use GitHub to create a new repository with a name that's similar to what our package name is in our composer.json. Now we just need to create our initial commit. This is done by first calling git init to initialize the local directory for git usage. Then we need to commit the composer.json and the composer.lock files along with the source directory. Then we'll set the origin to our new repository and push the change. I grab these commands from the instructions GitHub gives us after we created our repository. Now we just need to list our package so others can find it. We'll discuss that more after this word from our sponsors. When you're in production, a thousand things can go wrong. You could deploy a bug in your latest release. Your background jobs can silently fail. Someone could trip over the network cable at your data center. And this all comes back to you. You need to know when bad things happen and be able to respond to them quickly. That's why we built HoneyBadger. It's easy to install HoneyBadger in your back-end applications and front-end JavaScript. It only takes a few minutes of configuration and you'll have monitoring done. That's because we hook into popular web frameworks, job systems, and the browser, so that when any of them crash, we can automatically let you know. We ping your application from our global fleet of servers to let you know about problems with connectivity, latency, and SSL certificates. And we monitor your recurring jobs to see if any of them stop recurring. When there's a problem, we alert your team using the tools you already use. We can create issues in GitHub, Jira, and other issue trackers, and send notifications via Slack, PagerDuty, or other channels. When you click through, you'll be taken to detailed information on the error. You'll see things like request parameters, headers, user information, and the backtrace. Click on any line of the backtrace to view it in GitHub, Bitbucket, or your local editor. When you fix a problem, just mark it resolved and follow up with the affected user. That's HoneyBadger. We're the monitoring tool for web developers who'd rather be, well, developing. Now 
we need to introduce the next piece to this system, and that's packages.org. Packages.org is the default composer package repository. That means it allows you to enter a package name like PHP unit slash PHP unit into composer, and composer will check with packages to see that it's a valid package name and which public repository it should be using. Packages allows us to abstract away the complexity of if our package is being hosted on GitHub or Bitbucket and provides a list of versions of packages along with statistics about that package. To add our package to packages, the first thing we need is an account. Thankfully, accounts are free. After we're registered and have signed in, we can click the submit link in the top navigation. This will bring us to a form that asks for the URL of the public package. We're going to enter the URL to the project's main GitHub page and click check. This will cause packages to make sure that there's a valid composer.json on the URL we provided and make sure we're happy with the name. Then we can click submit. After this, packages will index our project and eventually the screen will refresh to show the information about our projects. If you've been following along, you now have a library that anyone in the community can use. Now comes the process of maintaining that project. As a package maintainer, we need to get some version of our package out for others to use. Composer uses semantic versioning to determine how to determine if it can safely upgrade to new versions of packages as they're released. We'll be using semantic versioning to label our releases. We have a video specifically on semantic versioning you should watch before you do too much with, with your package. I'm going to say that my example package is both feature incomplete and likely to change, so I'm going to use the zero major release to indicate this. Specifically, we'll be using version 0.1.0. Now, to actually indicate this, we're going to create a git tag. A git tag allows us to create what is essentially a label for a specific commit of the source code repository. Tags can't be changed, so we can always reference the tag and get to a consistent source tree. To create a tag, we just use the git tag command, followed by the name of the tag. In this case, it will be git tag 0.1.0. We can also call git tag without a name to see a list of all the tags. Now that the tag has been defined, we can use git checkout with the name of the tag to switch to that tagged version. Now, annoyingly, a tag is kept locally unless we explicitly push it with the dash dash tag switch. We'll do that now. After we have, we'll wait for packages to re-index our project. It does this automatically every five minutes, or we can press the update button to force a re-indexing. After the update has been completed, we'll see our new version listed in the versions on the sidebar. Now, we want to use this package in another project, and it's very simple. We just need to use the require command. As maintainers of packages, another important part of Composer is the ability to specify versions of system-level packages like PHP and PHP extensions that are supported and required. Composer refers to these as package platforms. They're not like standard packages we might have it install, and instead are virtual packages that we're saying must exist already for our package to be installed. We can see a list of these by running php composer.par show dash dash platform. For example, let's say we're requiring PHP 8.1 and the MB string extension because we need 8.1's a num support and some of the multi-byte string functions respectively. To do this, we'll add these to the required array in our composer.json. Now if we attempt to run an install, require, or upgrade and we don't have these packages installed, we'll get an error. This is extremely helpful for consumers of your package because they won't accidentally end up with a version of your package that doesn't run in their environment. As a recap, creating your own open source package is surprisingly easy. Composer uses packages to determine how to find the package, and we use tags to determine the versions. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Did you use this video to create a new package? Let me know in the comments below or send me a message on phpc.social and Twitter as Kotkek Warren. I would love to hear how you're helping the community with your package, and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading.